hello 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 and how are you hopefully you're all having a sunshiny day or a rainy day or a cold day or a dark day or a bright day it'll be a day no matter what okay what we're going to do now oh here we are in this bin beginners entangle learn with me series i think we're on number 15 i think have we done that many i think so i'm not sure i need to make me some hash marks somewhere so i can keep track of the number okay but anyhow yes that's what we are doing today right now right now and look here at this one here we have one that is called a tribe this one i didn't get the name of the person who actually designed this but this is one that you pretty much design on your own as you can see it's not like real symmetrical it's not supposed to be real symmetrical although I think you could make it symmetrical if that's what you chose to do but let me show you what I learned on this one and this one is, you know, you just keep going with this one. And you can, once you start, once you do it and you start decorating it, it just, you can just go all out with it. First of all, let me show you something really cool. I, I just learned by listening to um, this lady I was listening to that, you know, you need to have, make yourself a little artist to mark. And so... And so whenever you do a little art project, you don't have to sign your name. You can put your little artist mark because a lot of very famous artists, artists did not, you know, back in the day, you know, they didn't put their name on there. They just put their little artist mark and you can figure out who did their little art by their artist mark. So I made my artist mark. What my artist mark is because I go by Scrap and Lizzie. Sometimes I don't even finish, know my own name. So I use Scrap and Lizzie. And so what I did for mine is I made an S. My artist mark is an S like this. And then right down to the L. Scrap and Lizzie. That's my artist mark. I think it's pretty doggone cool. But anyway, I'm sure you don't care about that. But sure you do. But we're going to do this. They call it the tribe. I like this one. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm allergic to work. Oh, this isn't work. Okay, it's all cool. Okay, I like this one because you really, it's, you got freedom on this one. You don't have to have it measured out. You don't need to use a ruler. And there's no real rules. Okay, so, but there's a guideline to these. But I think everybody who has done one of these has come out different, and that is amazing, and I like that. So I'm going to show you how we start this one. And we start it, and, and it can start anywhere on your paper. It can be on the edge. It can be in the middle. It can be anywhere that you start this. Because, see, if you start it, like, on the edge, this is what you would have. This, if you start on the edge, you'd have that. I kind of got mine in the middle. I'm going to do this in the middle. And once you play with it a little bit, you'll see how that goes. Okay, so we're going to make a triangle. But the triangle, make it some, like a curved line. Curve, curve inward. Curve inward. And so there you've got a triangle to start. That's all you need to start is that triangle right there in the middle. Okay, and then you're going to put on... You're going to put on um, shark tails. Yeah, shark shark fins, shark fins, not their tail. You're going to put on the fin. Okay, so a shark fin, when you draw a shark fin, you draw curve up and then a curve in. So it's convex, concave. You'll go do that and, and go ahead and do that on all three sides. Okay. Curve up and curve in. Curve up and curve in. And now none of that kind of looks like a propeller on a boat. And so now, and I don't have them all exactly. They don't have to be exact. So then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do the same thing from this fin to this fin. I'm going to go... Up 
and in. I got that one a little bit bigger. That's okay. And then I'm going to go the same way here. Curve up and then in. And so you just want to stay the same way going around. You don't want to go this way. You know, if you're already going con convex and then concave, you don't want to go concave and then convex on the same one. This one, all of them are going to be like turning the same direction. So we go up like this. And, ooh, see, I already started messing that one up. See, just when I told you that, that's when I messed up. I'm going to start mine over. Just watch, just watch me. I'm starting over. Okay. Yeah, I got to think. There, I got my triangle. Now I'm going to go... Maybe I should go this way. I wonder if my brain would work better that way. Let me see if my brain works better if I go first do the concave and then do the convex. My, my, my shark is going the other direction. I just changed directions on the shark. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it that way. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I wonder what will happen if. I say that many times a day. And that's what I'm going to do with this. And I'm going to just keep going around. And now, it looks almost like I got three triangles going here right now. It's not always going to look like that, though. See, because you don't have to. Because, see, I went to one side and then one to the other side, but you don't have to do that. That's what's so cool about this one. I can just go like this and make my shark fin right there on that without going over another one. Then I can make my next one like this and see how it's bigger than that one and it goes over this one is inside of it. And so... You don't have to. This is why I love this one is because you can really come up with some awesome stuff. So just make sure your fins are going in the same direction. That would be the only thing. Make sure they're going in the same direction. And so this is a very, very awesome one because there is just so much wiggle room in this one. So much wiggle, wiggle room. And I need wiggle room. And so just, just keep going until you feel like you've got enough. And there, I think, I feel like I've got enough. So now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do an aura inside this first or triangle. Just put one in there. But then what I'm going to do, now I want to start doing some shading. So I'm, and, and like on this one, I did some shading here. See, I used my pencil for shading. So, but I used, this is what I did. Is I took my, I used the same Sharpie that I did the whole thing with. And I'm going to go from a point, and I'm going to, from the point, and I'm going to go down from the point and go down. So I've got like a middle, a middle section. And then I'll take my pencil and I'm going, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my shading as I do each one of those middle sections, because otherwise I think I'm going to get too many lines in there and I won't know where I'm at. See, now I know I did that fin. Now I'm going to go to this one. And See how I just, I just put those two lines down and did them the same direction as my fin, but then I'm going to shadow it at the bottom and then at the top of the middle, not the two sides, just that part of it. And then I'll go to another one and then you just kind of do them as, until you get them all done. No particular order, just till you get them all done. 
Now you may choose to decorate yours a little bit differently and that will be fine, but I'm doing mine like this. So just making like a little stripe down the middle and then shade that stripe down the middle. The, where I start the stripe is at the point up here, but it, when I get to the bottom, it separates. You see, so it's still kind of that curved triangle. And so then I'm going to shade that one. I shade it at the bottom and then go and shade it at the top. And then we'll go to the next one. And I'll just continue to do these until I have them all got the stripe down the middle. Make them look like a little stunk. And then you shade the very top. And the very bottom and that gives them kind of a rounded look once you do them shades once you do that shading kind of gives them a rounded it looks more rounded than it already is you've got a round it, it is round and curvy but it gives it more depth when you do the shaving shading shaving yeah go ahead and shave and so So we're getting that shaded and go to the next one. This also almost looks like a flower if you were to put a stem and some leaves with this and color it in a flower fashion. So many of these zentangles can be used also as other items, as other embellishments and things in your journals and your art journals and such. And you can start with what would be a zentangle but end it up with a flower garden, which how awesome that would be. In fact, I think I might want to do that. And there's so many different ways. Now, see, this is just one way of embellishing this. What do we call that? A tribe. T-R-I-B-E-E. -E. Now, when if you were to... Google Zentangle Tribe, you would find other videos or other images of this very same style yet in a different, with different patterns, but still the same basic idea. So you could see all the different things that you could, you could actually do with with the tribe and that's a lot of the I'm finding a lot of the zentangles are just like that that you just you know you just um each artist puts his own or her own little um little touch to it to make it all that different now on this one then I went around the whole thing with the aura Now, how pretty this would be, too, if you went around with another color. That would be beautiful as well. But I think putting an aura around any of your tangles really, especially tangles that have the round art, all the lines are like arches or circular. See, my, my um, aura is going off the paper because the ends, edge of the actual image 
is right to the edge of the paper. So then now I've put the aura all the way around, which gives it even that much more of a, of a, of, of a dimension. And then I went on this one, I put like just little lines, little hash marks all around, but you could go around with dashes or dots, or dot and dash. And that too adds a little bit more of something to your finished art. And this is one, I, I really like this one because you can really put your own touch to it and it doesn't have to be. Some of them that I've done, I have, um, you know, it's like this one here. It pretty much had to be just like this. It was hard to, or this one here, it had to be just like this. You couldn't really change it around much. This one here is um, this tribe is, it's open for a lot of your own embellishing or to put your own touches on it. And I hope as you're doing these, you're keeping them in, in an art journal. Fill your, even if you put them even on little squares of paper like this, which we call tiles. The Zentangle community calls them a tile. If you're doing them all on tiles, you keep them in a journal and maybe put, you might want to keep record of where you learned them, where you found them on the internet, um, of who, you know, what they're called and who first come up with it, which may be the first one, maybe not. There was one yesterday I even cut out. This one, I was doing this one yesterday and I cut it out and I thought that was fun too. You can take like a border, you can well, this isn't big enough, but if you cut, like this is three and a half by three and a half. If you cut one that is, cut the border color, like black is awesome, cut it in a uh, four by four. And then you've got a background that will make it look like it's framed. But then you must find your artist mark so that you can, you can, um, Make sure you put them in mine as an S and an L. That's my artist mark. And I didn't um I didn't use my my um stump yet to blend my pencil, but by blending your pencil, by putting putting a little blend on your pencil marks, it almost erases the pencil line and just blends the pencil color just all together. And it gives it more of a depth, more of a detail to have that, have that, um, all of that shading in there. But see, it's just, I think it's just beautiful. And, the, and really, if this was put up with different colors, how pretty that would be. And um, as a flower, if you were to make a flower and, and build a stem there, you could put another one right next to it and build, well, so that they overlap, you know, and you could actually draw it to where it'll overlap or underlap, you know either way but I love these I think they're so pretty and they're going to look very good in my journal and so let me see I'm gonna I'm going to here where can I put my other book boy I'm a clumsiest okay let's see oh we're gonna read out of the heart thoughts today we got this done pretty quickly so we got time to read out of heart thoughts Okay, this one here, it has to do with fear. Oh, up here. This one has to do with fear. And this is Heart Thoughts, A Treasury of Inner Wisdom by Louise Hay. 
Sometimes when your life is magnificent, you may fear that something bad is going to happen to take all away, to take it all away. Anxiety is fear and not trusting yourself. Just recognize it as the part of you that is used to being upset about something. Think of it for sharing and then let it go. Think of it for sharing. Oh, excuse me. Thank it for sharing and then let it go. I am always perfectly protected. Remember, when a fearful thought comes up, it is trying to protect you. Isn't that what fear is all about? When you become frightened, your adrenaline pumps up to protect you from danger. Say to the fear, I appreciate that you want to help me. Then do an affirmation about that particular fear. Acknowledge and thank the fear, but don't give it importance. That's very few words, but says very few wise things. All right. Thank you so much, so much, so much for joining me with, with our um, Zentangle project for today. This, I believe, is number 15. And I, I am really enjoying what I'm learning. I am really enjoying learning all of these little tangles. They're so much fun and so relaxing just to sit there and doodle. My hubster sitting right over there. He's reading a book with, or he's watching videos with his headphones in. But one day I'm going to put a little tray in front of him and make him zentangle with me. You wait till you see what he does. Yeah, he'll do it because he'll do anything I ask him about. Except I ask him to rob a bank and you won't do that. I cannot draw a straight line. How no, do you there, expect me to draw a zentangle? There's no straight lines in here, Papa. Yeah, he's going to do it. You watch and see. I always win. Yeah. Okay. God bless you all. May he watch over you every step you take, every move you make. And I will see you on the next video. God bless.